because they know that's where the business is now. Mm. It's not about auditions anymore. It's about me sending your reel. They just call up now and says, can you see what Greg Fitzsimmons' availability is from November 25th to December 8th? Mm. Yep, he's available. Okay, can you send over his reel and, and resume and a headshot? Yep, okay, thank you. And then your agent will call you and say, hey, you just got pinned for those dates. Then they'll call you like, you forgot about it. Mm -hmm. You've completely forgotten about it. Then they'll call you and they go, hey, I just want to inform you, we had a quiet casting call. You're not, you're not on hold anymore. I figured that by now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's been a month and a half. I'm not on hold no more. Well, fucking oop de doop <laughs> Let me just kick you while you're down. Yeah. yeah. You don't even realize you're down. It's uh, it's it's really changed. The, the 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 thank God for podcasts and thank God yeah. for that's given people forums and stuff like that. You know. Well, they got to start making small movies again. You know, there's got to be like movies that are made. It's so much cheaper now with digital. They can actually afford to pay people and do these little movies. Um, but it doesn't. the internet stuff doesn't add up. You'll never make your benefits if it's just web series. you got to get on network TV. Even cable, a lot of that stuff doesn't pay. I didn't know. I, I, who the fuck knows anymore? Who mm. the fuck knows? I know that like the games are on strike, aren't they? Hmm? The voiceover games, all those games. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, those people. The on video strike. game VO yeah. guys. The VO guys. Somebody's on fucking strike. Yeah, the animated people were on strike for a minute. It's been the the problem is is that you've got the actors union, the writers guild, and the directors guild all lined up with the studios, and they renew at different di different years. So they'll do a three year contract or a five year contract with the writers guild. The following year they re up with SAG. The following year they re up. And that way, the three unions can't come together. And, and, you know, have a front. They split us up. So we have no power individually. We got to all get together in one union. Hmm. You should put that all together. Did you get Lisa <laughs> at, start a movement. <laughs> fucking. What do you uh, think, Lee? I don't know. I, uh, I, I like it, but it's weird. It's weird to think, like, think about. Because honestly, I'm pretty high. And I didn't hear what you to uh, the union you said, <laughs> <laughs> but I was thinking about how like I used to be an editor and like to hear like about like all the money like actors and stuff make doing like short commercials. It's like it, I can understand why people are going on strike, like all of those people when when there's people making a lot of money, like people at the top of these things are making. Listen, tons of bro. Money. Ten years ago, for three or four years in a row, Ari Shafir. Not did great doing commercials. He fucking destroyed them. Oh, did he? Oh, he had like three campaigns early on that would kill us. See, even the campaigns changed. Yeah. When you would walk into a room, it would say March 3rd through March 18th. That meant you worked five days. Mm -hmm. What did that mean? That, yeah, so what? They were going to shoot Lee's commercial for a day. You sat there and took a paycheck. Mm-hmm. Now it says that, but when you get the call, it's for one afternoon. Like they don't even give you the the whole day and it's some overtime. Mm -hmm. Let me go overtime. Yeah, listen, on, take your time. Go take pictures. Go do something. Make believe you're a director. Talk about your fucking <laughs> Paris festival, whatever. You almost got shot. Whatever the fuck. <laughs> whatever the fuck happened yeah. to you. <laughs> <laughs> You got drunk with John Travolta. We get it. Tell the story again. <laughs> oh my God, it's uh, it's such a different fucking world. I was talking to a friend of mine, Greg Powers, today, and we were talking about staying grounded. You know how mm. things have changed in your world. Uh, like the shit I would do twenty years ago, I was never one of those guys that went to premieres and snuck into parties. I was always no, no, no. I was always a no, no. Where I came from, the only stuff that I ever fucked with was the stuff that I pertain to. By the way, there's a movie coming out this week with Warren Beatty. You guys see the commercial for it? No. He plays, a, he plays that fucking dude. Oh, right. I'm in that movie. No shit. I did a day in that What's movie. What's it called? Who the fuck knows? <laughs> <laughs> they just sent me an email maybe a month ago inviting me to the screening. I shot this two fucking years ago. One day. Wow. You're not going to even see me. I know you're not going to see me. I guarantee they caught me because I'm not even on the IMDb. Unless they listed me as mob guys. Rules mm -hmm. don't apply? 
Rules don't apply. I guarantee they cut my fucking. So you're seat. not going to the party. It was five, eight weeks ago, four weeks ago. So you didn't weeks. go. I, they emailed me on a Monday for Thursday, and I was leaving Thursday. Yeah, I was leaving town Thursday. So you would have gone. <sighs> Why not? As long as you don't do it all the time. I mean, going to stuff like that once in a while is kind of fun. Well, if you, you ever walk into a place and you're walking around like a fucking retard and everybody's talking, see, at those well, you got to bring somebody. Who are you gonna bring? Just bring a friend. Who, what bring friend Lee. Am I you got bring? Lee Syak. Can you, me and him, walk into away. a place? You down? You got nine one one on hold. You got nine one one on hold. Me and Lee walk in a place. Me and Lee are perfect to rob that joint. <laughs> Lee whips out a machine gun from that fucking jacket of his, and I start yelling, "Freeze!" Are you fucking kidding me? We walk in a Cuban and a Jew. You could feel the pressure. You know what I'm saying? We wrap around you like my fingers around that turtleneck. Oh my god! <laughs> I ain't letting go. I'm not coming on my leg. I ain't no fool. <laughs> I gotta see a movie. I want. I want a fan to make a movie poster of that that image. No, 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 no. That image should not be even seen. <laughs> That's fucking crazy. What do you got going on? What else is happening in your life? How are the children? How's the wife? Wife's good. The She's road. The road. You, where are you at New Year's Eve? Anywhere? Cobb's in San Francisco. Are you really? Yeah. You have balls of steel. And, Who's with you? I don't know. Um couple other people oh yeah it's one of those shows yeah 15 minutes 15 20 minutes twice two shows done that's a great fucking show that's a good gig huh that's a great gig man and bring the family up i think we'll drive up the coast for we got the whole holiday off drive up to san francisco run around golden gate park fucking eat some dim sum wake up late be great not a bad idea for New Year's. The roads are empty. You can't flirt with the waitresses, though. You know, if you get your wife there, that's a you got to remember. Well, why is your wife going to come? She's happy at the hotel. They got pay per view. <laughs> they got room <laughs> service. Right. Everybody's happy. Where the kids are, are entertaining. Yeah, what bring you some know? board games. Listen, my wife is great. I don't want my wife in a comedy show. Yeah. For me to do my thing, I can't have my wife in the corner. You know why do you think I don't perform at home? At home, hmm. I could perform. A mile from where I'm from, bananas in uh, Jersey. Yeah, that's my whole fucking tribe would come down there. I don't want them hearing what comes out of my mouth now. Oh yeah, seriously. So you have like a radius that you won't perform. If they really want to see me, they gotta drive. Yeah, I go to uh, I go to uh, Stress Factory. Yeah, which will be an hour away, and to really throw them off, I go into the city, even though. I'm from North Bergen, which is right fucking nine minutes from New York City. Yeah. We're Hudson County. I know for them going into the city is a big fucking deal. Yeah. Well, that's like talking about Southie before. There's people that live in Southie that don't go to downtown Boston. They don't go to any other part of Boston. They just live in Now, how like big is Southie? It's like a uh, couple square miles. And how far from that is where we stayed this weekend, Lee? You were right there. Yeah, we stayed right next to the Wilbur, pretty much. Oh, oh, not far. Not far. How far? Ten minute drive. I walk through there. I get mugged. No. I walk through there because I cop an eight ball. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah, there's all Irish bars on the corners. You go into those places, they'll they'll spot you. Somebody knows somebody. Tremendous. Yeah. Tremendous. Yeah, you can have a good time there. And uh the but the bars close early. What time? Two. Two o'clock, yeah. And then and then everyone shit. spills into the streets, and it's all these drunken Boston guys, and they all just start fighting. I was never... Guy, Lee, I'm and so it's sorry. not even two. Most of it's 1245. Mm. When I That's was, the last call, 1245. Was, when I was there. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah so... Right. And I, it's... it's cr- So, yeah, that's it's crazy. And something you can pay, but I think it's like millions of dollars to extend it to 145. Let's get something straight. I was never Captain fucking Midnight. There was a time where I was forced to be Captain Midnight because I really had no home. Hmm. So what was I going to go home for? To sleep and think about missing my parents and shit like that? I got to stay out. Yeah. I got to stay out. It was so funny. When I went home with my family, I took them to Rudy's, 
where I've been eating since I was 17. You, Where's Rudy's? Rudy's in Cliff, uh, Cliffside Park, New Jersey. Okay. We used to walk three miles on Monday Night Football in the dead of the winter, me and this dude named Tommy Russo. And we'd go in there. We were 16 and a half, and they'd serve us. Heineken on tap with uh, calamari with medium sauce. What are you, fucking nuts? <laughs> we'd be in there living like fucking Johnny LaBamba, that motherfucker. We'd make believe we had pinky rings, even though we didn't and shit. I swear to God, in those days it was like 30 bucks, 20 bucks, and we had it. Yeah. And I've been going, every time I go home, I hit Rudy's. It's still there. Still there. I won't even eat calamari nowhere else. Like, I got no pictures shit. of it on my phone. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Per and I mean, Pete, if you go there, there's two competitors. It's that one that used to be a place called Patsy's. Patsy's finally went under. But all those years, I stayed loyal to fucking Rudy's. One time, I disrespected Rudy's. <laughs> I went to Patsy's because Mikey Batoli was taking me out to lunch, and he kept telling me I had to go, I had to go, yeah. I had to go. But the whole time, I couldn't even. That's how much I respect. It's like, it's like my passion for Chinese restaurants. I have such a respect for Chan's that I had to boycott California Chinese food. Really? Like, I finally I couldn't do it anymore. Because every time I'd go home, I'd realize how bad the food I was eating here. Fucko here, my main man, came up to me this week like a man, and he said he went to eat, and he realized the same thing. You forget, and you order it, then you order it, and one day you go, what the fuck am I eating? This ain't beef and oyster sauce. This is beef and soy sauce with onions and yeah. fucking rice. I'm getting filled up on fucking rice and a wonton that tastes like dick. You bite into a dim sum or a dumpling, and it's a ball. What do you think is in that ball? You think that's real? Use on the fuck. You know what I'm saying? Right, that's right. Those it's always a little rubbery. That's rub. It, that, but they mix it all together. They put the eyeball yeah. with the fucking legs. Mm -hmm. They throw a little bit of pork balls in there it's and a, a, and a like, pig's ears and yeah. a pig's tail. And it tastes kind. Of, that's what gives it the flavor. Yeah. is the pig. But everything else you're eating, they fucking grind down the shrimp. The tails, that's what you're eating in there. They give it that fishy <laughs> flavor and shit. People are like, oh my God, I yeah, can taste yeah, the fish. That's yeah. a fucking shrimp snail. <laughs> you fucking moron. <laughs> but yeah, that's some mystery meat. The dumpling <clears throat> meat. There was a Chinese restaurant I went to in Boulder. I loved them. I adored them. They, they, they really saved my life. I could talk all this shit about. First of all, I loved them. I loved them so much, I went to work for them. Like, I called them one day, and I had my daughter with me at the time. <clears throat> I was a fucking bum, man. You know? And they came, to, and I was going to pull a quick one on them. I was going to uh, make them come and say I couldn't find my wallet. And I went out there, and I go, you know, I called you, and now I realize I can't find my wallet. He goes, take the food, call me when you find your wallet. My heart broke. That night I went, I broke the money. And after that, we just became friends. The guy goes, listen. You ever have a problem? You could put it on the tab. Your family. I was like, really? Well, I started putting it on the tab. I get a hundred dollars. I pay him. Uh -huh. One day I went in there. Like, we need a delivery driver. <laughs> Uncle Joey's here. Never fear. <laughs> I was selling coke too at the same time. So I was delivering coke and Chinese food. If you wanted coke, you had to buy a pint of rice, something, an egg roll, something, shrimp foo young. <laughs> Oh, my oh God. that's hilarious. Boulder was great. <laughs> Boulder was really great. Like an eight ball. I've had a great fucking time. I really had. Like, yeah. I'm trying to write this book, and as I'm writing it, Greg, it's so weird that reading the shit the next morning makes me sad, but at the same time, it takes me to a certain time period mm -hmm. that made me laugh, even though I had that sadness, which is kind of hard to explain. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, Jesus. How long have you been writing it for? 18 fucking years. I'm on chapter one and a half. <laughs> 18 years. I'm on one and a half. Come I, on, man. That shit's got to get out there. I read on writing 18 times. Nothing. <laughs> Nothing. You do your 20 minutes every morning? Every fucking morning. I do a little more. and Sometimes I read it the next morning and I realize I got to tone the reefer down or do more CBD oil. I gotta do something to get focused. <laughs> I'm talking about my life, and also I'm talking about the circus and Barnum and Bailey Circus and fucking the lap leopards. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with Joey Diaz? I gotta start from scratch and move shit around. You need an editor. I need a lot of things, dog. And that is the worst thing. Uh, well, that is the worst, uh, the, the least of my fucking nightmares, you know? Yeah. Let me ask you something. 
How old were you when you got it together, Greg? Lee and I had a great conversation this weekend. And it's been haunting him. And it's been haunting me because it started to make me think of what age finally something hits you and says, well, how long am I going to fucking be mugging people? I think, uh, well, I was never, obviously like you, I had a I had a drinking problem and I stopped that, but it wasn't until my father died. That just fucking snapped me into it. Then all of a sudden I just I just took stuff a little bit more seriously, but I also had more fun at the same time. How old were you? 23. That's when it all came together? 24. You? Yeah. You knew what you wanted to do after that? I want to be a comedian. I want to be a writer and a comedian. And uh, So in a way it took a tragedy to... I think so. You know, because I think that I had a lot of, I wanted to impress my father and get his acceptance. And once that was gone, it sort of let me go after it on my own terms more. Like, I always felt like I was still looking for his approval. I'm fucking 23 years old doing stand-up. I'm a feature act. You know, not making a lot of money, but paying the rent. He knew I was a working comic. But uh, but when he'd come out to see me, I would still, like, I'd get tight and I'd walk off feeling like a fucking child, you know? Yeah, I wouldn't want family to see me doing stand-up. Mm. It would fucking shock me. But no, nah, I was just talking to Lee. And I was about 32. But it was a time when I had to be brutally honest with myself. Yeah. Like, I was really, uh, I was just spinning my wheels. I was doing stand-up, which was giving me a little hope, but not enough hope. But in the back of my mind, there was hope. But I was just spinning my fucking wheels. And I had to do, like, an inventory and I always believe in the Abe Lincoln clothes where you, you put your benefits and your, you know, like in your uh, your benefits and uh, what's the opposite of benefits? Deficits. Oh, cons. Excuse me? Pros and cons. The pros and cons. Yeah. Like whatever. And boy, there was no pros. <laughs> there was like two pros compared to 80 cons. Yeah. You know? And you got to be a brutal And you were 33? I was about 32, man. Okay. My world came on my shoulders. I had already been married, had a kid, done time. And I had, I was, listen, man, you know, I wake up and thank the Lord every day because from 20 to 30, I have no idea. Mm. I have no idea how that even happened. You know, one day you're just 30 fucking two and you got 32 fucking problems and the bitch ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 32 sounds about right. That's, that's you, you've what, gone far enough down that when you make a change, it's going to stick. Well, at 32, I had done it all. Yeah. That's it. I had I could At 32, I had already written a book. Plain and simple. That was my biggest mistake, not sitting down right there, because at 32, that was a fucking book already. Mm -hmm. That was a tremendous book already. Then 32... By the fucking mercy of God, I got on stage, and that changed me. That was like fucking it, like that. That it was like a punch to the fucking mouth. But then I even went more rock bottom, maybe four or five years after that. But I was still holding on to comedy, and I was still going out every night and doing comedy, regardless of what was going on or how I was feeling. But then I had to make a choice, and I had to write some shit down. And you know what? In hindsight, I made the right choice. I made the right decision. I went for it, and you and I are having a conversation 20 years later. Yeah. I can't believe I left bold at 20 fucking, 21 years ago, and it went quick, man. Mm. It went, when did you leave Boston? 90, well, I went from Boston to New York in, in 93, and then I came Jeez. out here in like 99. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Me and Rogan, we figured the other day, we started fucking 28 years ago or something. Same time, same place, and uh, very different paths. You know, he got he got into sitcoms really fast. I mean, I remember when 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 Joe was coming up in Boston, he was like the guy other comics were afraid of. Like all the the seasoned headliners, they didn't want to go on after him anymore. So all of a sudden, he went from opening to headlining without ever being a feature. He just went straight to it, and uh, you know, he he just uh, stuck with it, and. You know, that was the same same time that you started comedy was probably when I 
that was a turning point. That my dad died, and I and I had just started comedy a couple years before it. And now it's about getting getting free again. You know, with the kids. The kids are what keep you grounded, correct? Yeah, right. It's uh, I like what's going on right now. You know, as I was leaving now, we were watching uh, World News tonight, as we do as a family. She has this little pad, and it's her pooter. Pooter? Her computer. Uh huh. You know, uh, and she was sitting like on my lap, and my wife was on the couch, and we were watching fucking World News tonight. The black lady died, and yeah, and the guitarist died. Leon Russell, right. the piano player, and. Uh, I look at Mercy, I go, Mercy, I gotta leave, you know. I gotta go to work. And she gives me a kiss, and as I'm walking out the door, she, I said to my wife, I love you. And all of a sudden, I hear her little voice going, I love you, Daddy. You know what I'm saying? Mm. You're like, where the fuck do I wanna go? Yeah. What disco do I wanna go to? What club <laughs> in the VIP talking to some assholes? What coffee shop? I, I don't wanna leave here to do nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're like, what the fuck am I thinking? Yeah, right. That's why when sometimes people ask me to, uh, you know, do their shows. Some guy's got a fucking show at a coffee shop and it's got a wheel that spins and then if your name comes up, that's when you go on and you're standing around like an asshole. Everybody get there at 8 o'clock. Show goes till 10. They don't tell you when you're on. No, 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 no. And you're all supposed to hang around back. It's like, I, I don't have time no, for that shit anymore. those days are done. Those days are done. I got to go in and out of there. <laughs> you know, the comedy store runs on schedule. Boom. They Wherever stay right I go on there it. runs on schedule. You know, nobody pops in. If they do, they're 15 minutes behind. Right. And usually you bump into somebody you enjoy talking to anyway for 15 minutes. Right, right. A comic you sure. haven't seen or something. What about Flappers? Great place. I'm going to be there this Thursday. My first time going in as the whole a headliner. Weekend? No, the just whole... one night headlining this Thursday, the 17th. I'm going to tell you how cool Barbara is. I'm in that motherfucking Valentine's Day, 9 o'clock. She's letting me roll the dice and do what the fuck I want to do. Valentine's Day. Yeah, you know, the Yoohoo Room is where, basically, I put the early footwork down for my special. Yeah. 55 people. No pressure. You do 35 people, you sold it out on a Tuesday night. Uh-huh. You charge ten five dollars You get a little workout. People that want to come see you, you, you tell people on the podcast... This is not going to be Carnegie Hall, mm -hmm. Greg Fitzsimmons. This is Greg Fitzsimmons with a notebook, just talking from the heart. Some shit you might like, some shit you don't. The last 10 minutes, I'll go to fucking form and close out strong. But Do some dick 50, jokes. Yeah, for 15 minutes, it's just going to be what's on the notebook. Yeah. It was a fucking great time, which I should have taped. We do have them, all of them. Lee has all the tapings. All those flappers, all those Ice House shows. Oh, you save all those Ice House shows. Yeah, on tape, not on video tape. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? I said, Lee, who the fuck knows? Who the fuck knows? Maybe we'll put them all together and sell them for $2 and donate the money to cats or some shit like that. <laughs> I'll have to buy a cat. That's hilarious. <laughs> It's the first charity you think of is fucking cats. Why not? Like some fucking shelter that they don't kill cats. They take a lot of money. Yeah, fucking, yeah, they you got do. got 30 cats in there. You got to pay for litter. Fucking love. You got some volunteers. But how long are you going to go in there and hang out with cats? A month <laughs> and one day you go home and go, what the fuck am I doing in my life? You smoke a joint or some of that fucking shit that's going around. And all of a sudden you're sitting there putting your shoes on. They smell like cat litter. You got a rash on your face and shit. <laughs> Lee, where's Tony Bennett? Mm. I swear to God, I just went somewhere deep into the mm -hmm. hemisphere. I was thinking about something. You went to college. Yeah. Ever? You graduated? Yeah. I almost graduated college, dog, and then I went to prison. Do you know that? That in was the, in, in, in Boulder? In the middle of all that, I was 18 credits away, and I was up there. I was rocking and rolling. I had good grades, but... One day, the guy came to me. He goes, listen, the next semester, you got to take like an intro to sociology. And I had like a, a, a side counselor in those days. I had the, the girl I was married to, her dad, thought he was like a fucking intellectual. And he used to always tell me, don't take those sociology classes, you know. 
And I'm like, uh, they're making me take it. You got to take two of these fucking dummy classes, whatever you describe. We call them dummy classes. So I ended up taking intro to social and something else. The intro to social, I don't even remember what the fuck we talked about in there. But the other one was very interesting. We went in there and the guy goes, I want you to do me a favor. This is your assignment. I want you to watch Do the Right Thing and tell me what you see. I went home fucking furious. I didn't want to watch Do the Right Fucking Thing. Mm -hmm. That was the last movie I ever wanted to fucking watch in those days. Yeah. When that movie came, listen, if it wasn't a Charles Bronson movie, a Steven Seagal movie, or a De Niro movie, you were in no fucking danger. But I paid for the fucking class. I might as well do the right thing and watch do the right thing. I watched this movie, and the first time I basically peed my pants. I haven't laughed this fucking hard in five fucking years. Yeah. No. At this time, yeah, it had been six years since I had been in that uh, New Jersey vibe where everybody knew everybody at the deli and people said weird shit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, we hung out, you know, the blacks hung out with the blacks. There's a scene in there with the guy from Taxi Driver. No. With a guy from Deer Hunter, John. Hurt? No. No, John Voigt. No, John. Pump up Deer Hunter. There's a guy. We just spoke about him. I did a movie with him. Very nice guy. He's the white guy in the Deer Hunter that doesn't go to Vietnam. Not Fredo, but the other dude. John something is his name. Anyway. Let's see here. It don't fucking matter. What are we talking about here? What are we talking about? Talking about uh, starting off in college. So John Savage. John Savage. Yeah. John Savage is the... Have you seen Do the Right Thing? Yeah. John Savage is the white guy that steps on the black dude's sneakers. He's from Boston. Oh, yeah, yeah, He has yeah, the right. Boston shirt on. Right. And we, you're from Boston. No, I'm not. I own this. Ah! And they all... <laughs> We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.